Hi, it's me. It's Ron Funches. I could go right now, right? Yeah. Hi. We keep going. Keep that in. Why not? It's me, Ron Funches. Thank you for listening to the podcast, watching the podcast, however you choose to consume. We do appreciate it. If you want to come see me live doing stand-up comedy, This weekend, March 29th and 30th, I will be at Comedy at the Carlson in Rochester, New York. Um, Then I'm just going to be hanging out at home a little bit, going to a wedding, and that's nice for me. But then after that wedding time period, you can get ready. We're doing the Netflix is a Joke Festival. I have shows a part of that. You can come to Fun Voices, myself, Blair Saki, in the belly room of the Comedy Store May 11th at 10.30 p.m., Part of the Netflix is a joke festival, as well as May 5th at noon in the Bourbon Room. I will be doing my brunches with Funches show. Um, so come early, have a good time. We're going to have some fun comedians, some giveaways, and some good times. I also will be in Appleton, Wisconsin, at Skyline Comedy, April, excuse me, May 16th through the 18th. Tacoma Comedy Club, May 24th through the 26th. Uh, and then we got Inside Out, the movie, coming out June 10th. I'm in that. Isn't that fun? Other than that, um, Luke coming out this coming Monday, April 3rd on Apple TV Plus. We have two episodes out and then every week after that, there'll be a brand new episode. Make sure you're there early and often. Go back and re-watch the first season so that we can get a season three so that I can maintain my lifestyle. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors on Nickelodeon. Um, Other than that, let's get to the podcast. I'm tired. Hi. Oh, I hope you're feeling strong, but it's super okay if you're not. I hope you're feeling brave because it takes bravery to even make it these days. I hope you're feeling loved. Have wonderful people around you. I hope you're grateful for that love. I hope you're maintaining um, in the face of whatever you're going through. Right now, your boy is tired as fuck. Um, There seems to be in the freelance lifestyle that I live, there's always this range where either I have too much free time in which I start to freak out and think I will never ever work again or I have no free time whatsoever and we are in that part right now where I have um shows that just about every weekend or every other weekend and I come back home and then I got Teddy time Monday through Wednesday. I've been having auditions that have been coming in that are actually been really good auditions. Um, nothing's worse than when you get an audition for something that you don't even like. It's like going to a date with somebody you know you're not even that into and then they turn you down, you know? And you're like, look, I didn't even like you that much. I was being a good person by coming out here and showing you a good time because people obviously don't like you. And so <laughs> I was doing charity, but that's inauthentic as a person. I'm trying to learn not to do auditions I don't like and not go on dates uh, with people I know I'm not going to enjoy. So um, it's nice within this year to be getting a bunch of auditions for things that I actually would really love to have. Uh, but in turn, not getting them is frustrating. So... <laughs> But what's fun is when you have them coming in continuously, you can only get mad for so long before you're like, oh, wow, maybe this is the thing. I Maybe I didn't get that one because I meant to get this one. And then you don't get that one as well. And then you're like, oh, fuck, maybe I'm not getting anything. But <laughs> but there's one thing um, I've learned and I think I can uh, give advice on if you ever find yourself in this cycle Um, I think sometimes we're prone to freak out when we get too busy and start to tell people like, no, I don't want to do anything no more. I'm not doing anything. And you burn out and you cancel a bunch of stuff, you know, and I've learned to really just ride whatever is happening, give up all control and just go through until my calendar is empty again. Um, And Knowing that you don't have to be perfect is things that can frustrate me during this time period is that I get mad that I my diet gets off course. My um I really love the cycle that I am in when I'm home where I can go to my jujitsu, go to Pilates, do my weightlifting workout, eat well, 
and go out and do shows and go out on dates and go out and do um, concerts and stuff. But when I'm on the road so much, it really bites into that. It changes my diet. It's hard to keep my workouts going and and get frustrating. But at that point, it just remind myself not to give up and just keep the wheels on the road and do what I can. Keep that car moving forward. And soon things will get back to being relaxing or I'll have too much time on my hand and then I can work out again, maybe do two a day. So um, it's just a reminder that when you are in that hectic time period, don't freak out. Don't try to um, get, don't get bitter. Don't get mad. You know, you got to think about that. I often, I often listen to inspirational hip hop and stuff in that time period when I'm getting really tired and getting close to get burnt out. Cause I know usually it takes about 14 days of working in a row. And then I'm like, I can't do anything. I have no battery whatsoever. Um, and we're getting close to that. So, uh, until then I just remind myself that this busy time period and the things that I'm getting to do, I'm getting to do a lot of great things. I'm going to go be on the today show promoting loot. That's super cool. Um, I'm going to get to do a lot of fun. Again, the auditions have been really fun. Hanging out with Teddy is always a blast. And so I just remind myself that the things that I consider um, a little annoying now are things that I begged for when, five years ago, three years ago, just to be on these, get these opportunities and, um, have these fun trips so and i just want to say thank you to apple you guys are super nice and you put me in really nice hotels and then it makes me it it spoils me for when i myself am on the road and i'm like i'm not booking myself in these nice of hotels um and then it makes me mad (laughs) but it's also something i know i can't maintain forever again i'm really trying to have a consistency and um, selectivity focus and push myself and hopefully get myself into theaters and stuff um, in the next few years because I just can't see myself maintaining these like multiple flights and two shows a night and then trying to audition and keep my diet together and all that stuff. It's not maintainable. I know that. Um, so I'm not going to quit, but I'm hoping we can get it to a level where I can do shows just Fridays and Saturdays and have enough time to be home and chill and relax and fully embrace my time with my son and fully embrace my um, time at home with myself because I like my life. And to me, being able to balance my health and my jujitsu and all my stuff is more important than um having 200 more people think I'm funny you know I know I'm funny that's also one of the things I want to tell you if you ever come see me at a show uh, like the late show Friday on Louisville learn um people seem to be under a misconception that you're there to decide if I'm funny or not you're not it's long been determined it's been decided scientifically through time effort the the money that I have been given for my work the people who enjoy me, who also do comedy at a high level, um, they have decided that I'm funny. So if you come to a show on a late Friday and you think you could just talk over and judge me, I might yell at you very much <laughs> and just tell you you were in, you are out of line. You're in the wrong business. This is the wrong place. You needed to Google, do a YouTube. Get a little taste of my style and decide if it's for you. But you deciding whether or not, oh, oh, okay, that one was funny. Like, bitch, they all funny. I know. I've been putting them together. Some of them funnier than the others, but they all at a base level pretty funny. So um, just for comedy club patrons and the general internet, um, you're not here to decide if I'm funny. I know. Nor my friends. Know anyone that I love and enjoy. Uh, we already know either you get on board or you don't, and we try to catch you later. But there's no mean to, reason to be rude. None of you are the arbiters of funny with comedy. It's very subjective. Um, I just don't like it when I just don't understand. Like, if you're coming to the show, be optimistic that it's going to be good. That's going to be fun. Now, I don't really blame the Late Show Friday because also the kitchen had caught fire and there was no food 
whatsoever. And if I were to show up at a show and be told I cannot have a single chicken strip, uh, not a gallop of a glizzy, not a uh, not a narrow nacho, um, I would be upset too. But don't take that out on me. Um, other than that, though, great shows in Louisville. Love going to the Muhammad Ali Center um, and seeing that they only they don't only focus on his boxing accomplishments. They focus very much on his civil rights work and they focus on how just that time period where you could be the greatest in the world at your job and um, be so skilled and then still not be able to sit down and order yourself a slice of pie at a diner. And so when I get mad about things like that, I, I'd like to remind myself of the people like Muhammad Ali and the people who come before me who make it safe for me to travel around and do what I want, say what I want. I do, my jokes are sometimes, I mean, it's so fun to go into places where abortion is illegal and like just do my jokes about I mean, I don't even want to ruin it because I want you to see it one day, but they're pro, very pro-abortion jokes. And to do them in places like Louisville and other places where abortion is illegal, I'm not like, oh, I'm brave or anything. It's actually it tends to be um, a good act of service because people there, I think, really like having someone be like, okay, good, I'm not alone. Someone else thinks like I think and someone else um, wants the progress that I want. Um, so I'm going to keep traveling to places like Louisville, like uh, Spokane, Washington, and just enjoy. I like the balance that my life has right now where I get to really hang out with real people. And then also um, they took an art museum slash hotel and they were like, hey, Apple wants one of these rooms so that Ron can do press for Lou. And they just... <laughs> took over that hotel <laughs> three rooms of that hotel just for me <laughs> what they must have spent you could have just given me the money i would have loved it <laughs> the money you must have spent on that uh but again i get to know that that part is not real the realness is the louisville is the um people coming to my shows and again loving it that getting um recognize more and more and positive interactions more and more on the street with people. So I appreciate that. If you see me and you know me and you like me, say hello. I'm, I love it. I'm into it. Um, and then other than that, this Sunday I came back home and um, was invited to Tignataro's special premiere of, of Hello Again out on Amazon Prime uh, very soon. And it was just beautiful and uh, to be invited. I, I mean, I, get, I just love the spaces I get invited to and the type of comedians that I love and enjoy that I get to talk to very sweet, kind people, um, the type of people that Tig likes that she invited. And Tig Notaro has been like a um, inspiration for my comedy for so many years. She was one of the first people that I saw live that let me understand what my style was and that my style was valid and that I could be quiet and calm and, speak at my level and I didn't have to be like blah 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 what, what's your birthday blah 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 um and so just watching her latest work which is not only sharp and weird and silly and the, one of the most playful things and confident things I've seen in a while super clean which is um I don't certainly believe you have to be clean as a comedian I think there's certain jokes where uh the tool of cursing can be certainly add to it um but there it, it did make me go back and go like okay what am i where am i cursing where it's needed and where am i just defaulting when there's it could be a funnier word or a funnier option for me and so um watching that i mean that's the best thing you can want as a comedian when when you can watch a special that makes you rethink the way that you approach something um, and again, not only just in the the cleanness, but just in the silliness and the not taking yourself serious at all. So um, I just really wanted to to push that because I love Tig. I love her work. And I hope you guys check out her special. And I hope you enjoy this episode with our friend who we love. Enjoy. You see him all over. If you uh, got the spectrum. You see him in the spectrum commercials with Kev on stage, and and 
Um, shit, why can't I remember his fuck? Tony Baker and Tony Baker, who is hilarious and does the voiceovers. He does, uh, you can see him on Abbott Elementary. You see him all over the internet. He's got his own, I mean, they just got, they just building a beautiful outside of the Hollywood norm, um, just like cohesive unit over there that I, a, a black man and women and, and, and I imagine people who are not black, but mostly black men, um, who, are working together and have a real friendship in comedy. Um, and it's something that I really enjoy watching and really root on. Um, so I wanted to have him on today to talk about him, talk about turning 40, talk about being a comedian, talk about some wild shit that I did not know about. Enjoy our conversation. I'm sure you will with to hear more. Enjoy it. Oh shit, you got the Optimus Prime joint. The one, uh, that you could command to transform. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, he's dead. He's long dead. I really? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you lost the charger? Or I what? don't know where the charger oh, is. Oh my god! <laughs> this is a teenager. It's like eighty and the eighties and, and early late night seventies. This is a dream room for them. Arcade games, mm-hmm. Transformers, big ass computer, gaming PC. Oh man, you living life, baby. I try. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Where you're like, it's not, you wouldn't be like, this is a kid's room because you'd be like, well, this kid likes old stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it could be a time capsule thing. The parents, like, never allowed them to watch regular TV. It's just yeah. All oh, yeah. He's a VCR weird, a weird tapes. Kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, hey, you ever seen I Love Lucy? Ever, ever seen. What, what, what year do you think it is? <laughs> we got it. I dig it. I dig it. That's my, that's my daughter to the team. How are you doing to here? I I'm good, brother. I'm tired. I just mm-hmm. I literally just got off the plane. We landed like five thirty. Where are you coming plane. from? St. Louis. Okay. Um, my birthday was Thursday, so I just hit forty. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother in law got married on Saturday. Uh, then I had a show at the Helium in St. Louis okay. on last night, and flew back this morning. So I'm tired, man. I've been partying since since monday okay since last monday so. what does partying entail for you uh had a show at flappers okay um i filmed tuesday morning another episode of uh abbott so i couldn't party too hard so i just had like i don't know maybe like seven drinks kept it light on monday night uh that night tuesday night my wife threw me a party at the association downtown we had like a like 150 people just come out we just partied up and then Saturday. You know that many people? You know what? I guess so. Or that many people know me. Okay. Because if it was 150, it was realistically probably about 130. Okay. But it was about about 45 comics there. Okay. That slid through, and then the rest of the people were just people there for free liquor and pictures. But, you know, it was good. The people that I attract, they're typically they're good energy, good nature people, so I don't mind having good people around. Just there. You can't come back to my place. So, but there. <laughs> like, hey, what are we doing afterwards? You going the fuck home. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to party a little bit more, but you're you're going home. Yeah. How do you feel? I mean, I'm turning 41 tomorrow. Oh, uh, snap. Okay. Let's go, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, good. Actually, that's what I would have brought some, man. I yeah. know. Yeah. Is there still time? I go get a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you post late something? What's your, what's your drink of pleasure? I don't drink. I'm okay. allergic to alcohol. Oh, you just had, I just saw you, you order some flowers, though. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I, I don't I don't smoke, but I, I know some people that I can you know get some molly and some crack up here real quick, a little cocaine. Little wow, smoke. you really skipped some steps. <laughs> if I threw the molly in there, it's mid-grade. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a big leap out of that, baby. <laughs> I don't judge. Hey, man, live your life. You know what I'm saying? No, like, it's always, it's still weird to me when I see people do this shit so casually in the middle of a conversation. I'm like, yeah, man, so they're talking about we're going to shoot early spring. And I'm like, fuck yeah, man, let's get it done. I was like, you just did cocaine off yeah. the inside of your thumb. Yeah, no, I can't. I'm always just like, I go like, whoa, I got babies. Yeah, I yeah, I just, I gotta get I just, away from this. Hey, man, listen, I just, I, I'm when I moved out here, I knew I was gonna be exposed to a, a different, a different element of life, and I just, I let people, you know, what I'm saying, I don't yuck nobody's yum, as long as it don't affect me, mm-hmm. you know. But how also, do you feel about turning forty? Forty is, I feel more empowered with my nose. You know, sometimes you tell somebody, no, I can't make it. You know, I got to make sure the kid get the homework done. Or, you know, the missus be it. So now I can just say no. 
Mm. Complete sentence. Doesn't require any explanation. Like, nah, I'll just turn 40. <laughs> What's that mean? Nigga, no. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel more empowered with that because it's a blessing. Where I'm, I mean, you know, I talk to your mom. She's from Chicago. I'm originally from East St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And, you know, survival rate is like like 1.7, you know? So I'm, I'm just excited to be here, bro. Very excited to be here, so. Yeah, that's a real uh, Black 40 statement. But... Listen, it, it, it is. But a lot of people don't understand, like, it's, uh, you, you, you can definitely become a product of your environment if you allow it to. And given the circumstances that I was a part of, um, are we rolling? I yeah. Know, oh, okay. uh, uh, so at 14 was a really hard year for me. I think we talked about this on my show. I got uh, kidnapped, shot set on fire, I had a kid, my best friend was killed in my house. Um, all of that it was in the span of a year. Nah, that's so, a, yeah, that's a year. I couldn't even drink, so I was just stressed. Yeah. I had nothing, <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing I to relieve like the stress. I feel like set on fire, you yeah. might as well be like, I want to have a drink. Yeah, it but you funny. know what I'm saying? I just was like, I don't want to do anything that could lead me down a, a slippery slope that has these type of things repeat themselves. I was like, I wouldn't even fuck it no more. I had the kid. My second time, my second time having sex, I had the kid, and I was like, "Well, I'm not, I'm not having sex. It's stress reliever. I just, uh, I'll figure it out." So, uh, yeah, man, to be forty, and to not have any illegitimate. I found out the kid wasn't mine when I graduated high school at eighteen. So, no Ill- 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 illegitimate kids, no hard drug problems, a little high blood pressure, but I mean, who don't? You know what I'm saying? Coming from the Midwest, who do baby? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we like fried food, baby. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, so, I mean, listen, little uh, takes care of that. One pill a day. Mm-hmm. You know, but my levels are good. You know, I can lose 20, but I'm straight. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Still had myself in a bar fight. I don't get into a lot of those, but if I had to, I call the police. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, that's yeah. what we talked about earlier. I'm not, I'm not at that yeah. part no more. I have nothing have to prove. Part. Yeah, you're 40 yeah. and black. Call the police. I've saved money. That's yeah. what good lawyers like. Yeah. And I just throw a bag at them, but like, he did it. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm showing up to court. I want to testify. Yes. Put, me on the, put me on the stand. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. These glasses are going to work, baby. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Tell me more about this year that you had. Uh, man, it was just. Uh, what year was this? I was fourteen. Fourteen. So, young lady got pregnant when I was thirteen. Um, and then when did you start having sex? At thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. My first was my cousin's baby mama. She was already his baby. Mama. I'm glad that there were words after cousin. Yes, that would have been. <laughs> You would have had to put all type of labels in front of this. All type of warnings. All type of run frontiers and company does not support. <laughs> all type of stuff like that. No, uh, it was just, it was, that was the environment I was in. I told him that uh, she was, you know, trying to bed me. And he, his response, true response was like, you scared of pussy? Mm. And it's like, well, at that point, yeah, I yeah, am. Yeah, you should be. I don't yeah. know what to do with that, yeah. man. Yeah, it's not too many years after you came out of one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's familiar, but it's different. Yeah. The one I came out of, it was it was a luxury apartment. This, <laughs> this is the projects. I know this is the project. So, yes, I'm afraid of that. That's where violence happens in the projects. So um, that happened. And then, um, you know, getting, getting kidnapped, uh, I was getting off the public school bus and... Um, some guys caught me because my uncle was a, a a pretty successful drug dealer in mm-hmm. the neighborhood, and he had a couple houses stashed around for places where they uh they uh did uh, uh certain cutlery, you know, projects mm-hmm. and things of that nature. And so these gentlemen wanted the locations of the, and I had none because I, I was I was just a kid in the ghetto in front of the ghetto. I wasn't really product of like I you know I was associated with because of the people in the family but uh that I when they called me I had a backpack full of books I had an inhaler I had the butyrol on debt you know <laughs> I played tenor sax it was it was actually I think more of an inconvenience for them to kidnap me they made I me drop my so. shit they yeah, was like, once you get put all this shit down you grab me sir this is my first kidnapper and I do not know the protocol for what to take and what to leave 
Um, but they tied me up, set me on fire. Uh, they set you on fire? Yeah. Why did you have, why, what was the thought process there? Is to get rid of them. Mm, they wanted yeah. to kill you. Yeah, yeah, that's what they wanted to do. But, you know, they used kerosene instead of gasoline. The ropes caught on fire first. I was able to break the chair and get out. And then I ran and told uh, uh, my family. So they were like Batman villains. They weren't good. At Not all. At all. But I mean, this, this, is that, this is that time where, yeah. you know, like. Because when you think about it, you're going to go, like, all right, we're going to burn him alive. But yeah. then you're like, well, he is tied down by ropes. And yeah. Those so this would this 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 be easy. Yeah. It's an abandoned house. Nobody's going to hear him. You know, this is going to be easy. Light they didn't work. have guns? Uh, thankfully, no. Yeah. Thankfully, yeah, thankfully no. Yeah. I mean, it was daytime. I mean, it, I'm sorry nice. that I'm just trying yeah, to yeah, correct their work. Whose fucking side are you on right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, guys, 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 get it, it together. Come on, man. Put the fucking gun. <laughs> How hard is it to do this? Four pounds of pressure. That's all it takes. <laughs> Depending on the gun. <laughs> But uh, my best friend was killed in my house because uh, one of my uncle's friends was playing with a gun while he was asleep and tried to, I guess, wake him up or scare him. Gun had a uh, hair trigger, which in that case didn't take the four pounds, and uh, shot him while he was asleep. Mm. And uh, that was hard because I, uh, after the funeral and throughout the process, I think his family thought my family had something to do with This guy that shot him wasn't in my family, but his family was part of the police department and so I don't I don't think he I don't know if he went to jail mm. so I don't know if they thought we had something to do it but shortly after our house was shot up mm. because of that and then um, yeah then my son was born and after my son was born my, at the time my mom was my best friend but our our relationship drastically changed she stopped talking to me started talking at me and it just it hurt my feelings and I didn't want to be a part of that anymore so I left I left the house at 14. I was staying with friends, family members, where I can, wherever I can crash. And then at 15, I moved in with my uh, cousin through marriage. And I stayed with him and his family. They stayed in a four-family flat in St. Louis. And each one of the apartments was filled by one of his sisters. And then his mom stayed in one. So I moved in with him and his mom. And that was, I, stayed, I was there through high school. And then at the high school, I got my own place and went to college. But before I went to college, at the I wasn't planning on going to college because I was going to plan on being there for my son. Um, that's when I got the DNA test because uh, it was at that time it was seven hundred fifty dollars. You know, mm. or you go on more. And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't want niggas in my business. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, so I saved up enough money from White Castles and got the test. I came back from my senior grad trip and the results was waiting for me. It wasn't my son. So for four years, you thought it was yeah, man. And you were involved in everything mm -hmm. for four years. He, uh, I, I, there were times when I didn't have a babysitter and his mom wouldn't come get him because she stayed with her mom. So she had help. But it was just me for the most part. <clears throat> and I had to take him to school. Mm -hmm. And teachers that I thought fucking hated me, like really stepped up and would watch them on that planning period. They would, uh, the book lady in the bottom of the, uh, the building, she would watch them because she didn't have a lot of interaction with people. She was just there like organizing or people needed books. Um, my social study teacher, shout out to Miss Malden, she would watch him. So like a lot of, Mr. Raymond, I thought he hated me. He was my advanced physics teacher. He loved my son. Like after the first meeting, he would always had a stuffed animal for him like every other week and just give it to me. So like a lot of people, uh, and I don't know if that's because they, they were sympathetic or empathetic to my situation or it was a combination of that and me just being a good student and like I was a person of the people, of, of people, yeah. So I, I, I was always advocating for the students. I was on National Honor Society. I was part of debate team. I was in uh, marching and concert band and I was doing all of this while working at White Castle. I started mm -hmm. working at White Castle at 16. Before that, I was working at junkyards, picking up cans, stripping cars of aluminum, breaking down, alternating, getting the copper wires, all of that, whatever I could do to make money because I had to pay for daycare and diapers and clothes and phone bill and all of that. So I was I was hustling my ass off, man. So now after you found out, did, would you have any relationship? With I said, like, fuck this nigga. They ain't my <laughs> kid, baby. You know what I'm saying? Nah, man. Fuck out of here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was initially hurt, bro. I was, I was crushed. I was crushed. Um, and the mom was like on some like, I want another test type shit. I'm like, all right, well, let's do it. They go, the course are going to go through the same people I went through. I went through 1-800-DNA type. I still have the letter to this day. I have it uh, with all my other important uh, legal documents. Um, 
And so I was, I was just, I was hurt and I was angry at the world. So I shut her out. Uh, and then after like two weeks, I was missing them. So I hit her up. I was like, yo, I want to see him. And she was like, no, nah, you proved you ain't the dad and all of this shit. And then uh, she stopped answering my phone calls and changed the numbers. And shortly after, she moved out of town and her family wouldn't tell me anything. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward, <clears throat> before I moved out here, I get in contact with the aunt, her sister. And she tells me that Shorty had moved to like Oklahoma. And at the time, she was in a, she was in a home for schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. The kid became a, a ward of the state. She told them I was in Miami. So they're sending me letters to Miami trying to get me to, you know, come over and try to claim or file for anything. <clears throat> but because I never responded, they put me down as to have no custodial rights. Right? So the aunt had him. She was like, hey, I have him now. Do you want to spend Christmas with him? This is going to the Christmas of 2008. <clears throat> and I'm like, Absolutely. Absolutely. So he spent Christmas with me, he stayed with me for like a week. And then he went back with her because I think she was staying in uh, San Francisco at the time. Um, I was out of college. I that graduated college that, 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 that year. 2009, I'm about to go on tour as a tour manager for Truth, the smoking awareness campaign with the crazy commercials. She calls me at the day before. I was like, hey, I got into it with my guy. Uh, the cops came. They took. She had two or three kids. They took my kids. And because... My son had a, uh, already had a, a record in the system. They just automatically sent him back to Oklahoma because he was already a ward of state. So I'm like, fuck, okay, cool. So I hop on the phone. I'm calling different lawyers and shit like this. I'm trying to get some type of legal advice on what I need to do. I find out where he's at. I get the phone number. I'm talking to his case agent, and she's helped me at first, right? About a week, week and a half, and I'm like, all right, well, I don't have that type of money because they were like, you have to get a lawyer in that state. When it comes to family law, you have to get a lawyer in that state and potentially a lawyer in your state too. Mm -hmm. That lawyer in your state has to speak on your behalf because the laws are different from state to state, and no lawyer would do it for less than $10,000. I just graduated. I just stopped selling weed. <laughs> you know, I don't have that type of money. And so uh, he eventually gets adopted by... Uh, a white family, and uh, they take really good care of him. And the aunt put my name and number down, so when he turned 18, he could reach out if he wanted. Mind you, I don't know what they've told him. Like, I don't know if they told him I just dipped on him because I didn't like his mom or whatever. I don't know if they told him the truth. I don't know if he knows who his actual real father is. I don't know any of this because that, that Christmas we spent together, I didn't want to make it about that. I just wanted to spend time with him because I miss him. So, um but yeah, he's uh, I believe he's back with the aunt now. He's 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 grown. He's over twenty one. He's a he's a uh, he's a rapper. I go on his Facebook page every now and then mm -hmm. and check on him. Oh, with his background, he had to be a rapper. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, rapper or comedian. Yeah, we got the most trauma. Yeah, so it only makes sense. But uh, I, I check I check his stuff out every night. He's not very good right now. But when he like he starts to show more profit, I'm, mm -hmm. then I promote him because I don't want to blow his level too soon. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah, but when he starts, I'm like, okay, now this is some shit I put on repeat. <laughs> then I'm. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm gonna share it. Then I'm Damn, like, yeah, I get it. You yeah. are lucky to be 40, huh? Yeah. With no major drug issues? Yeah. And not an alcoholic? Oh, that's what I feel too. I mean, I'm a goddamn miracle. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, talk about it, man. <laughs> talk about it, man. Yeah. So I, I had, yeah, my son I had my son right after I turned 20. He he was mine. So I had it, so we just stay in that. <laughs> 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 You didn't fool out. <laughs> <laughs> let me guess. Let me guess. You was responsible. You was in his life. Oh, <laughs> <my man>. <laughs> <laughs> that makes him tough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's not tough. Uh, <laughs> no, he's a sensitive boy. Hey. And I'm happy for it. Bro, it's, listen. I'm, I'm so happy to hear you say that, bro, because I feel like a big part of the reason why black men and, and just men of color specifically are so quick to jump into rage and anger is because we're not encouraged to have that. And a lot of the generations from the 70s and 80s, and even 60s, you know, when we fall as a, as a five-year-old, four-year-old, we're told immediately, get up, you're a big boy, don't cry, 
Don't cry. We're not even encouraged to express pain. Mm -hmm. We're encouraged to suppress it for years. And you take that toxic behavior and that mindset into workplace settings, into clubs, into relationships, and then you're stuck with a 45-year-old man who don't know how to express himself. Mm -hmm. And he goes straight to rage and throwing stuff around and yelling and cursing. Punching TVs. R bro, punching holes. Oh, you're never going to get your security deposit back, bitch. He's fucking up all of that for you. Uh, therapy and getting with a woman who encourages me to talk shit out made the world of a difference for me. Mm. No, I love what you just said because that's one of the biggest goals with, with my youngest, Teddy. Um, he fell today and he was just down and he was like, pick me up, daddy, pick me up. And I did the, the, right in the middle and mm -hmm. I go... No, I go, you can pick yourself up. Mm -hmm. You're a big boy. You can pick yourself up. But once you do, I'll give you a big hug. Mm, come you on guess. over here. Yeah. So pick yourself up, come here, and I'll give you a hug. Yeah. And that's how we do it. That's I, a good balance. Yeah. That's a good balance. I thought you were about to unfold everything I just packed in. No, but no. That, that was a good, I was ready. I was like, God damn, can I disagree with him on the show? <laughs> yeah. Like, that, was, that was perfect. I think that's a great display of fatherly love. It's still masculine, but it's still loving. You know, and I feel like we need to know that it's okay for us to feel. It's so it's it's sad when you got a group of guys and somebody breaks up with somebody. You can't tell your group of guys because mm. they're like, "Why are you crying over this bitch? Mm -hmm. Fuck wrong with you? What thousand bitches out there? Yeah, but that one was mine. Mm -hmm. Okay, I loved her. We had unprotected sex. We went hip to hip. <laughs> <laughs> I gave I her my last of access. my fries. Yeah. yeah. And so it's that's just what I hate when you break up is lock. lock. I mean, I love vagina, but just yeah. being able to put your hand on inner thigh. Ah, when you lose good. inner thigh access. This while you driving? Yeah. This right here? Don't. Yeah. Brian Tyson Tiller? Left yeah. hand is dripping, the other is gripping her thigh? Yes. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. That's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> But I do, I love hearing that because that's a, I mean, a lot of my, even my material about that is about that right now. Just, I want to provide, um, to let my sons be children for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that in the black community that we often we grow up so quickly. Oh, yes. And there is a beauty to that, to know what the world is truly like from a young age. Mm-hmm. So you're not, I mean, one of my favorite things was like when Trump got elected the first time, bound to happen again. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> prepare yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you're, if, you're, if you're in a certain class, it don't really affect you either way, for real, for real. It might make things a little tighter, but it's, this is really. If that's you got an EBT card. Yeah. Prep. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, you know, we had another. COVID, <laughs> balling again. Y'all you know? <laughs> want to do something, go up in the CDC and just break some shit. You know what I'm saying? And then go over to student loans and break some more shit. Because what the fuck? <laughs> Tell has been scamming everybody but the student loan deck. What are you doing? Yes. Jesus. Well, that's what I get. I mean, as a community college dropout, I never felt smarter. <sighs> <laughs> I interrupted your thought though You were saying when Trump first got elected Oh that people who Had this like I, So many of my white comedic friends mm -hmm. Have this view of the world That well this is what's right And so this is what's going to happen mm -hmm. And then when Trump won I saw so many of them so depressed And had their um you saw white people depressed? Yeah. What's that like? It was I've fun. Never, it's slightly fun. I've it's never, no, no offense, but I just, no, I don't see them. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's kind of like you see a white oh, no, homeless me. person. You'd be like, well, how did you fail? Um, <laughs> <laughs> if it's a white homeless person, the black homeless, I'm giving it to the black guy because this fucking <laughs> world was set up for white yeah, men. Yeah, no, I get it. I interviewed Greg Barron last week and he, he was recovering from drugs and had cancer and stuff and I still was like... I know, but you was tall and white, and they was just hand hand <laughs> They just, they, society has been set up to, like, white men have that. Like, if I get lost in the kid, as a kid in a store, I'm looking for a tall white man mm -hmm. to help me. Because that's what society makes you think. Like, mm -hmm. that's what's right, you know? And it's, 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 it's interesting, like, because we are now definitely starting to see the paradigm shift uh, where, you know, we're seeing strong black men in positions of power and... I think the scope of what's right and what's wrong is becoming more evident visually mm -hmm. for this younger generation. Like, my daughter is dead set on right and wrong. Like, 
we, me and my wife had our first date at a Starbucks in St. Louis, and we were riding by that Starbucks today, and I was like, yo, let me pull over, let's make a video of this where we had our first date in 2005, our very first date. And she was already pregnant. I didn't know my wife was pregnant at the time uh, by somebody else. I just, I, that seems to be my thing. That's my go-to. Okay. Yeah, this is all. Yeah, just... I, yeah, she told me two weeks after that. I was like, bitch, I'm already in love. You know I'm not going nowhere. Fuck! But anyway, uh, we get out the car. And I was, I was like, you remember what you got? She was like, yeah, you, I got a vanilla bean. I was like, let's get one. My daughter's like, you know what the fuck we not? We not supporting that because what they support. And she's very adamant on it. She's 18, but she does not waver on that. Mm-hmm. She sees the line of right and wrong, and she does not support. She is not wavering. And so it's not just her. It's her friends, and she has friends from all different walks of life, but they are all about calling out the bullshit that's mm-hmm. wrong. And I, and I love this for this new gen. They weak as fuck. I'm not gonna hold you. My daughter couldn't go what I went through. And she shouldn't have to. I'm glad she'll never have to. But yeah. but they are very aware and very vigilant about speaking out. No, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So when the uh, when Trump got elected, just so many of them were just like, What happened? And I was like, Oh, this is the first time that the government's <laughs> let you down. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you would have killed on the support group. Yeah. <laughs> if you had came with a support group for white comics, so white people that got let down by the government. Oh man, your name attached to it, they would come just on that. Like, <laughs> that laugh, you gonna feel better after that goddamn that's laugh. True. That's a good point. <laughs> Damn. Damn, that's funny. Wow. Oh my god. So a lot of people just be pregnant around you, but not by you. Um, this is a day in the time, man. It was just that age, man. People was just, you know, just. You know, Plan B wasn't readily available mm-hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? It was back then. I think it was like, like sixty-five, seventy-five dollars. You had to make an appointment at at uh, at uh, Planned Parenthood. Now you can get a guys for twenty dollars. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm snipped. I ain't got to worry about that. Yeah, me now. too. Come yeah. on, baby, yeah, VJ. Yeah. Ah! We didn't know what we were going to do. Oh man, I'm going to yeah, yeah, let that one. one. Damn. <laughs> Open the door. Somebody started waiting for our black card. Come on, hand it over. Like, well, what happened? I saw that goddamn yeah. mishap of a five. Yeah. Like, oh, right. Well, luckily with my voice, they never wanted to give yeah. me one in the first place. So. <laughs> no, no. I got move. invited to. You the- get yours because if you laugh like that in the movie theater, you got the whole crap. <laughs> They know. Oh, oh yeah, that's Ron. That's Ron right yeah. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I got invited to the Essence Black Hollywood Black Women mm-hmm. of Hollywood luncheon, and that was like the first time that I got invited to like a Hollywood Black event. Really? And I was like, hell yeah. That Do you, how good. does that make you feel? Because your comedy is for everyone. It just maybe white people gravitate to it, mm-hmm. but you're not playing to a specific crowd. You just like comedy, mm-hmm. and you just tell what's funny to you. How does that does that make you feel alienated, or you just at this point in your career, you're just like, well, it is what it is. I did what I did. Well, um, it, it's helpful that I don't like to be invited to any to anything. <laughs> 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 you pay for a nice house You just stay in your nice house I like so, staying in my nice okay, house that makes sense um, Obviously this I was like oh God I'll go support yeah. black, Excellent black women mm-hmm. uh, So I was happy to go To answer your question directly um, I learned to not care My I can't control what my audience is Yeah. Um, what's fun is that I'll still do Particularly um, what I consider strong black jokes. I, and what's fun for me is watching the people who do get me mm. of, of every color. And when, when you just said what you said, I love that because I'm like, oh, he gets what I do. And yeah. that means a lot to me that when people appreciate what I do. Mm-hmm. And someone like Talib Kweli, where um, we became friends and I introduced, I did his podcast and he talked about this joke, which I just posted recently about... Um, like the Dragon Ball niggas joke that I do mm-hmm. where I talk about how like they only the media only wants to show you one type of black dude, which is either usually thug or dead. And I was like, there's so many other types. And he was like, that was such a fucking strong, smart black joke. Joe. And I was like, no one ever fuck, but no one thinks of me like that. I do. I love the joke that you did about, uh, you know, being a father and lying to your kids and equating that to the government. Mm-hmm. You thought you were like, you think they're just batting the fucking hundred? You think it was such a thought provoking, level head, smart joke. And it was a great 
tie-in of being a parent and being a provider as like the government and how sometimes you have to tell your kid a little white lie. And if you doing that, what the fuck do you think this person who is in this position to look out for everybody that he's not related to is doing? You love your son. He came out of your balls. <laughs> this person has no fucking relationship to you. They are just charged with doing a good job. We hope they do a good job. You think this motherfucker be in a, You think if this motherfucker got some ass waiting for him, he's going to read every bill that he signed or he's just going to get his fucking signature on it so he can bust one? That's what he gonna do. Is that the heart of it all? He's still a nigga. Why or not? <laughs> <laughs> Ass is on the line. He's still a nigga. Okay. <laughs> he gonna get that nut. Uh, I mean, I like it because more and more lately, I see more black people come to my shows, and that makes me feel good. I do mm-hmm. feel. I mean, way back in the day, it was just something I had to accept because I remember doing this show in Pascal, Washington. And came back hanging out with some friends, and they were black. And um, there was a dude who didn't go to the show. He was just playing video games. And he was like, oh, I think he was like the boyfriend of the girl that went to the show. And he was like, oh, man. He's like, oh, how was your show? I heard you were funny. And I was like, yeah. And he, as soon as he hears my voice, he was like, yeah. He's like, but I bet niggas don't fuck with you. <laughs> And I was like, no. And it then, was- and then <laughs> he goes, he gave me the greatest advice ever. He goes, ah, don't even worry about it. Niggas don't really fuck with anything until it's too late. Yeah. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah, yeah, man. That, that, and I mean, you know, Pascal Washington, I don't know what that is, but it sounds like, it, you know, the demographic is very one sided. Yeah. Oh, Pascal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's not wrong. But like, you know, sometimes when people find out that that, that wave is, you're on a whole nother level, you know, but it, it helps you because then they can go back to the early catalog and catch all the way up. Mm-hmm. And then as they're catching up, they're going to put other people on like they discovered it. And I'm like, oh, you ain't, you ain't heard Ron Fudges? Oh, man, dude with the laugh. Mm-hmm. Now he's talking like he's your biggest fan of shit, mm-hmm. but he's also putting people on. So like, yeah. that's the beauty of it, you know, just, you know, if you got to play catch up, you got to play catch up. But you're already, you know, still ascended, and you got you're, you're solidified in in this in this game, man, which is an amazing thing. You know, you've made a career, taking care of your family, you know what I'm saying, and and you're living good, man. That's that in itself is a testament to where you are. Yeah, I agree, <clears throat> and I try not to worry about the rest of it. Like what, none of it, as far as like special amounts or. Mm-hmm. How I make the money, I think, think of it a lot. I'm always talk about it like pro wrestling. Um, comedy to me is so much like pro wrestling, mm-hmm. and the fact that the wrestlers in themselves they they know it's a work. Mm-hmm. They know that like they don't get to pick who's champion mm-hmm. and stuff. However, there's a pride in that, and if you are, you're like, look at me. And then there's the people who become too prideful in it and like think, oh, I'm the shit and none mm-hmm. of this. But at the end of the day. What really matters is how much money you put away for your family. Yeah. That's how I've always looked at comedy. Mm-hmm. As long as I'm able to say exactly what I want to say mm-hmm. and do what I want to do, then all then I'm living a great life. I don't have to be like on six Netflix specials or have a, my own thing for that. Because sometimes you you end up trading your freedom for mm-hmm. more money. Yeah, a lot of times, mm-hmm. a lot of times, I, I, you know, a lot. <sighs> I'm not in that position yet, you know what I'm saying? So I, I got a, I got a little time to give away if somebody want to make me super successful. Uh, I got I got about, you know, 12 hours throughout the day. I'm, I'm not, I ain't going to give up the whole 12. If you want to fuck with me for four or six of them, I, you know I'll throw it your way. Uh, but I, I, I do a... I would agree that, like, it, it is a, it's a slippery slope with the bigger you get because, you know, you can go out and some people will recognize you and... You know, you can smile for a couple of pictures, but you can still go throughout your day relatively easy. You mm-hmm. get to a certain point in your career, you get too big. You know, like Kevin Hart is one of the biggest names in this this game. Like, he can't just go to the grocery store. Mm-hmm. You know, he can't just go to the mall. He can't just take his kid to a, a, just a regular park and throw the ball around because of the height that he's in. And it's a, it's such a crazy duality mm-hmm. to to be in a position where we serve the people and we make people so happy, but your freedom and your safety could be threatened because you are so big. Mm. 
Yeah, that's a little, I mean, I think there's probably blessings to that we don't know about as mm-hmm. well that probably make it worth the trade off. Oh, yeah, you can get out of security. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely got high security, but I mean, just like even setting that up, like scheduling. All right, and I yeah. need three guys to be with me. Yeah. At this time, we're gonna go to this. Makes park. your world more insular. Makes it feel less real, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I love. I love the position I'm in right now, where I get to. I get invited to some nice things. Mm-hmm. Some of them I don't, but I get invited to some of them. What's What's something that you want to go to that you haven't been invited to yet? Um, I know a couple people like the Oscars or something like okay. a big like a big deal thing like that. Yeah. I've never been invited to. I can make that. Listen. Hey, Miss <laughs> Marshawn, holla at me, bro. I got somebody for you. And I had a couple niggas that be breaking the people's cars at the Oscars. Hey. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers can steal me a lanyard so I can give it to my own Ryan. Yes. <laughs> but I love that I get, like, so again, like the, the Essence Hollywood luncheon where I get invited, I get to sit there and have a table, um, get to walk the red carpet. However, when the handler lady, the publicist from Apple, mm. is asking the people, you know, do you want to interview them? They always like, like nah, and that to me is the best. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, yeah, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Like, it's, a, this isn't even about me it's at all. And so, and then B, like, yeah, that be you got nothing to say to me. I got, I, I would just say some <laughs> bullshit general statement to you. Let's all just forget that and just be like, no. And then I'll go in and eat lunch. This is great. <laughs> So I would have tried to flip that, but like, yeah, man, we here supporting these beautiful women of color. Yeah. And their oh, I have my thing ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I'm, but I'm really also excited about this uh, the new Appleware, man. I wish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I we'll slide that in. Say, you know? <laughs> since you brought that up, they give you gift bag every time, and this time I could tell it was headphones right away from uh-huh. the box. Uh, open up, I'm like, ooh, I just lost my pair of Air AirPod Maxes, so cool. I don't have to replace them. They're getting right go. here. Open them up, Beat Studio Threes from 2021, and I'm like, come on, well, you, you know, just you are just getting yeah. through the fucking product that you got sitting around. Yeah, give me the fucking, give me the real stuff. Hey, they realized that they messed up by giving Dr. Dre a billion dollars. They was like, it's going down tremendously. <laughs> it got is her. going down. I mean, they are placing those in. It was just music videos. Now they putting them in gum commercials. Anywhere they can get some product placement. So if they can get Ron Funches coming out of there with some hair pizza, hey, we might spike it a little bit, baby. He's good with the whites. <laughs> Get some wrestling fans random again, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, cross pollination. Yeah, that's right. You got, you know my demographic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you? We talk a lot about goals on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Where do you, you just turn forty? Just turn forty. Um, you get working on your career. You do fun stuff. You get to be on the, on the Abbots. Yeah. Um, you got a, you and Kev on stage, and Tony mm-hmm. Baker tend to work a lot together. Yeah. Uh, every group of things seem to be going well for you. But what are your your goals? With the career, health wise, mm-hmm. spiritual, whatever you want to share. Um. Well, I want to pay the IRS off. Oh, you owe the IRS money? Uh, I do. I do. I got How I much had, money? I had one good year. And here's the thing. <clears throat> and I, I want to work with Patreon or someone. So if you guys hear this, you know somebody that might be interested. I want to do a conference or maybe a one-day thing. Because I know anytime you're talking about finances, people eyes glaze over. Mm-hmm. So my idea would be to have an amazing entertainer paired with somebody that can uh, help steer people the right way, especially when it comes into the entertainment realm. Because a lot of people are coming into this money fast mm-hmm. uh, from streaming and stuff like that, <clears throat> but they don't know what to do with it. So, like, they don't know, like, if you're making under 100000 LLC is fine, but if you go over that 100000 you see the escort. Um, they don't know that never keep money on you. If you want liquid, never have more than ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, have everything else in investment. That seems like common sense. It's common sense to people who've been doing this for 20 plus years and you came into money early. But if you just started streaming two years ago and you blew up, unless you have a financial advisor, Mm -hmm. you don't know that. They don't teach that in school, really. No, that's true. They don't teach even in business school. Yeah, that's my mom has always mentioned that to me. She's like, you've always been good with money. And you've always, I've always been like, I would go through just count exactly how much I had from a young age and then I would break down going to Walgreens and being like <laughs> okay well you know with the, with the allowance we got you could get a comic book and you could get two chunky bars but you could also get now they're doing three for fun yuns for 99 yeah. and you yeah. throw that in there with this and you and I was always just calculating exactly how much and so yeah when I first got money which probably would have been working on Undateable um, my 
So, so wait, 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 how long ago was that? Okay. That would have been eleven years ago. Okay. All right. So so you've been you've been in that for a minute though. For a little bit. So I just got I just got to my money new to me. Yeah. Money still got that new car smell to me. Yeah. And I didn't know all of those things. I just like I get an LLC. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna save my money, I'm gonna do good. And the government is like, Oh, you got all of this? You yeah. ain't had no expenses? Oh man, let me get, oh, yeah, let me get, oh, let me get yeah. half of that. Oh wow, yeah. Because yeah, think about like we you got an offset yeah, with losses. We, we, own, we, own, we own a studio, mm-hmm. so I don't have to pay for studio time. Mm-hmm. I'm touring with Kev. He's paying for my flights and my hotels, mm-hmm. pays for my food. So it looks like I have no expensive. Mm. So I just made a shit ton of money. They're just like, oh, we need that. Yeah, need yeah. Like so they hit me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they was like, let me get that six figures real quick. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, say what, bitch? And it's just like it was. It was easier selling drugs. Mm. You know, it's just, it's hard to do that legally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and once you do, I hear it's not that, not that it's, fun. It's, let me tell you, I sold weed for two weeks and it was the most stressful two weeks of my life. Because I wasn't even moving like big shit. It was like like dime bags and shit. But I'm looking over my shoulder, getting in the car. I'm like, oh man, am I on somebody else's territory? I'm not good at fractions. Mm-hmm. So I'm like trying to eyeball weed. And I'm giving away way too much weed. Because yeah. I don't smoke it. So I don't know what I'm fucking doing. Oh, you were selling, you don't smoke? Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't smoke. No, no, no. I was, that was, just, people was like, you're not good at this. Yeah. You're not, you know, so. Usually most people sell weed until they can smoke weed. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I wouldn't, I don't get high my own supply. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we, if we talk about chocolate, I was <laughs> <laughs> Didn't sell Girl yeah. Scout cookies. I was never one of the people like, hey, you want to buy some chocolate to support my... That shit would have been gone. <laughs> I got frustrated one day and went through the whole fucking box. Yeah. Uh, would but you yeah. believe I sold hash for a couple weeks? <laughs> you? Yeah. I wouldn't have... I, I would have felt like this was a setup because... No, actually, I would have believed you because of your laugh. I'm like, it's no way he's not smoking this weed, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty much what happened. What happened to me was that I was going to move in with a friend of mine, and he ended up meeting some weirdos and bringing them to my house. Not a good idea. And I could tell from the get-go, from the way they were looking around at stuff, Mm -hmm. that they were casing my house. Uh, And so eventually they were like trying to sell this brick of hash and they were like, well, you know, if you give us this, give you your GameCube, da 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 we'll give you this brick of hash. And I just, in my head, was like, either I give them this stuff or they're going to take, take this stuff. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so they already cased out what they wanted. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, I gave it to them and took the brick of hash. And we learned quickly that people don't like buying hash. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so then I just, for a month, had a bunch of hash to smoke. <laughs> What I see, this is how little I know. What is hash in in comparison to weed? What's the difference? It, hash is more like sticky. It's like um, back then, especially it was like a little brick, mm. um, and you would like put a ball of it on like a safety pin and heat it up, and then just smoke it that way. Yeah, see, that's a lot of steps. That's yeah. like heroin. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'm saying you've got to you got to tie something up mm-hmm. or, or, or cook a spoon or if the syringe is involved. Yeah, too much. Yeah, it's too, too much. much work. That's no. too much work. I don't want to do all of that. No, I agree with you. Yeah, they got you. Damn, yeah. bro. But, but I get it. Like they was gonna take it either way, so I, I yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Is he that guy still your friend? Um, slightly, a little bit. Yeah, you should let yeah. me talk to him. I need to talk to him. <laughs> he is still my friend. Yeah, okay. for sure. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't see him. Or I'm so glad man. you didn't say it was this guy. It would have been no, awkward because I was gonna give him a look. I'm like, no. what the fuck were you thinking, buddy? No, he ended up yeah. becoming a correctional officer, so he went the other way with it. I worked in a jail. Did you? Yeah, I was. A so did my mom. I was a teacher in a jail. My mom was a nurse. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't. It's, it is a, that's where dreams go to die. Mm-hmm. It is. It's a different. It's always weird to work at a jail to me because then I'm like, if you're a prisoner, I would. It'd be such easy. Be like, look, I'm forced to be here. You work here. Yeah, that's weird. I'm like, I'm trying to help. Mm. I was like, you don't. You don't have your high school diploma. You want. You want to get out and do something. Did you like so when I end up back in jail teaching people like you? Hey, well, first of all, I didn't you know this is my secondary job. Right? I'm a comedian <laughs> up top. I'm trying to be some joy to oh, your motherfucking life. Sounds like you're successful if you're here teaching oh, 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 well, You know what, bitch? At four, I leave. <laughs> you know what Lights House is for me? When I motherfucking feel like it. <laughs> 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 My peanut butter and jelly does not come in the package. How about that? <laughs> that peanut butter and jelly came in the ketchup package. So, it's, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I would. I can only let like two or three of them slide. Then I'm 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 lose my mind. But uh, pay the IRS. Uh, lose 30, 30 pounds. Um, and I I want to. I've been torn since I moved out here. This year I'm not gonna do as much. Um, and if I do, I'm just gonna do one night, 
one nighters, maybe even co headline. I've done three this year already. I want to be here more to do more acting. Mm. So I've been really putting that into the universe. Like I want to be in front of the camera more, like more to uh, get my chops up, get the respect in that world, and hopefully leads to a movie. But also, I feel like at this point, you have. As a comedian, we have so much competition on social media with sketches and stuff like that, and then people just drifting into this lane. Mm -hmm. Let me build up my audience a little bit more. Mm. You know, let me maybe this way I help widen it, and then when I do choose to go back on tour full full steam, I'll already have a baked a bigger baked in audience mm -hmm. um, because it's it's hard, man. You oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. comedy's hard right now. Yeah, I mean, I like I feel blessed that I have the balance. Um, and now it's changed for me because I, with the shows and stuff, I always be like, I don't give a fuck about my counts. Yeah, da, da, da. this is my fun time between I have to go Oof. to work. That's how you know you're successful. <laughs> <laughs> when you can say I don't give a fuck about my count, I have my manager checking the count every six hours. I was like, I just posted a new video. Have them check it in five hours. Cause I I still care right now. Cause that that is that check. I ain't gonna say what club I was at, but they 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 gave me a guarantee um, of three hundred dollars to come. Oh no! I was like, yeah, this is the guarantee. I was like, the ticket to come there gets it's more than that. Yeah, this is the guarantee. Now, if you get this much, and you get these other percentage breakdowns, all of this type of stuff, and all the the guarantee is on it. So if I don't get out there and hustle hard. I don't eat. I lose money mm -hmm. on that. So, you know, <clears throat> I got work to do. Yeah. I look at it like I don't get defeated. I get frustrated at times, but I don't get defeated because, this, like you say, this is fun for me. I love doing this, and I love blending, you know, like the infotainment type thing, talking about therapy, talking about, you know, communicating thoroughly and transparently with my wife talking about raising being a girl dad and that type of stuff stuff that is funny but also like hopefully somebody would take this little nugget that i planted here mm -hmm. you know what i mean I, I planted it right under this joke but if you laugh hard enough and you'll show your molars you'll see it yeah you know so that's that's what i love to do man and i honestly would do i would do comedy for free if like bills were taken care of if i had another crazy source of income i would do that shit for free yeah i love it it's no joy that amounts to the idea, and this is how I always equate it, is like if someone is terminally ill and they're watching my special, my movie, my show, whatever, and then that 30 minutes to an hour span, they don't think about anything else. They just laugh in that moment. And nothing else matters except the next setup or the next joke. There's no amount of money that could ever equate to that. Mm. That's just a feeling of gratitude that I get, and I feel like God put that on me, and I'm going to do it until I, I run out of breaths in my body. So I just love it. That's, that's why I do this shit. No, I love that. I couldn't add nothing to that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I love comedy so much. It's one of, I mean, it's probably, besides being a dad, mm -hmm. being a dad's my favorite thing. Ah, That's my favorite thing. Yeah. I love show that. off. It's fun. Fucking show off. Man. And you know I'm mad? Because I know he's a great fucking dad. <laughs> I had a dad that was like, I'll be right back. And I see him like six years later. Man, you want to go to the coffee? Let me go to the gas station real quick. I'll be right back. And I know he's a great fucking dad. My mom, my, um, my, my, my wife is a fantastic mom. Mm. Like my mom did a really good job as much as she could while I was there. But my wife is such a fire ass mom. I was like, damn, man. I, I almost wanted another kid just so another human can witness that environment and that friendship and that type of nurturing and just she dope she's, mm. she's one of the she's one of the dopest people i've ever met in my life i love that it's beautiful and i'm jealous of that uh, uh, yes <laughs> got his ass back <laughs> you can't get me back i mean that's the biggest thing that i hate about going through the separation and divorce and i tell my friends i'm like the biggest thing i feel like i lost was this idea that because i already you know had my first son i was 20 and mm -hmm. shit was wild and things and that made sense but i was like oh i'm gonna have another kid 40 mm -hmm. we settled down have a wife gonna just do that have a yeah. thing and come home and and to not have that and yeah. to have like a con just a not a, a relationship where we get along at all is yeah. like i'm like man i'm not i'm not gonna get that Hmm. And now I got the vasectomy, so I know I'm not gonna get that. Yeah. And it's one of like I don't have many regrets at all, but like that's one of my regrets where I'm like, man, I wish I got to experience parenting 
in a traditional format. Yeah. Would you ever be open? And I'm I'm sorry, I didn't talk about my wife part to like to poke fun. I didn't even think no, about that. So I apologize if not, that came off. No, your just, joy does not affect hey, me. I know. I just I just didn't want it to come off as when you were sort of talking, I was like, oh fuck man, why did you say that? You an <laughs> asshole, bro. I was like, I wasn't doing it for that. No, I'm um, happy you got a beautiful marriage. Thank you. Um would you ever consider um adopting? Yeah. Uh-huh. I would. I think I would too. I would I would it would have to be around four. I need them to be able to wipe their own ass. <laughs> and speak. Like I need them to be able to speak, but like I I I definitely like thought about it, but Yeah, I think that's a good age from from early till four. Mm-hmm. I'd like to get a little older just because I feel like they don't get adopted as much, mm-hmm. you know, for sure. That's true. Um and also I wanted to have a daughter. I wanted to see what it would be like to be a, a dad of a girl. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm still open, but it, so much would have to change about my life for that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be here more. Mm-hmm. Be here more. Um, a partner that I, I, w- I mean, because now I'm, I have this. You in the streets? <laughs> a partner in the streets. Hey, nah, you, you sound like you're in the streets. Like, I mean, my boy, I have so much of my life as a tell you. It's crazy. These bitches are crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, once I'm free, I'm free, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wild times. Yeah. My, my legs just up in the air. Hey, man. Um, look, 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 Funches. I'm gonna get us some business cards and say I'm Ron Funkin Funches, and I think that would be amazing too. Yeah. Just hand that out right there. What is this? Read the card, baby girl. But just the uh, lack of trust that I have right now. So I'm like, oh, if I was like, to, to even the idea of someone ever living with me, I'm like, oh, I gotta know you for like ten years. Yeah, yeah, so. I get that, man. That tra- that trust thing is very hard. Yeah, at the that was the longest healing process for me. After I found out my son wasn't my son, mm-hmm. I didn't have any respect for women for years. Mm. Uh, and after that, I I was on a war path of destruction to them and to me, to myself. I didn't have any respect for myself. And even when I got with my wife, I thought I was healed from it, but I had just suppressed it so well. But I still needed years of therapy to let that go, the resentment, the hatred, the uh, frustration within myself of not being there, the regret of not being there, all of that. That was stuff that I had just done so well at masking and suppressing. I thought I had dealt with it, but I hadn't. Mm. And it's it's one of those things where everybody wakes up to their own alarm clock. So you can't rush it. Yeah, you have to just let it happen organically. You you meditate on it or you pray on it, whatever you do in your spare time. But you it's it's one of those things. It's an ugly little demon that you have to face. And yeah. it, it it only gets easier with time. Yeah, I mean, I was, I wanted to rush it for sure. I was just like, I, I basically was like given a time limit of a year, and I was like, mm. you should be fine after a mm. year, and it's been a year. And mm. then I was like, oh, I mean, I just been real honest with myself. I'm like, no, nah, man, you're you're like very fragile right now, and yeah. you don't trust anything right now, because yeah. um, it was just wild, like just you know, type of thing where you're like, uh, you have a conversation with someone, and then they're like, that never happened, mm. and you're like, what the fuck. Did, mm. did it happen? Did it happen or did it? Did it? No, I'm pretty sure it happened. I was mm-hmm. there. I remember. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> God, could you uh, replay the clip? Yeah. I see, bitch, that was me right there. <laughs> and here's your ass that's there too saying it didn't happen. And then, But she'd be like, no, that's not me. <laughs> I'd be like, you just gonna sit up there and let this bitch lie in the face. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's me in court. I, I'm sitting in court being like, I thought we can't lie. I thought. <laughs> hey, make her sit on the Bible. Because when her hand ain't on it, she forget. Make her sit on the Bible. Bailey, get the Bible back, bro. This bitch in here wilding, bro. You just ain't use that gavel at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's wild, man. We were married two years. We have been going through this divorce for a year and a half. I hate that for you, man. I, I hate... I'll say this. I hate that for you because you seem like the type of person that wants those type of things to work. And you have... It seems like... And again, this is just from, you know, I'm in passing and then you blessing me and coming on the show, but... Every time I met you, and even through your your comedy, you seem like such a loving individual. And you know, I know you know, uh, you know raising your son and the patience you have to have with that, bro. Like you love love, and I I I I I appreciate that so much because for years I I I was not a fan of it, 
And now that I have genuine love, because, you know, your parents are supposed to love you unconditionally. But when I left the house, it was because I felt like my mom didn't love me anymore. And to be with my wife now and feel unconditional love. Like she, she waited with me till I got better mm. on that that therapy shit. And so to hear you talk about you didn't get to give that again to somebody. It hurts me, bro. So I I pray that you 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 find that with somebody and you get to experience that to the fullest level because it is a beautiful thing, man. And um, you deserve it, bro. Like when people have that in them to give. It deserves to go to the right person. So I hate that it happened, but I'm glad that it happened now, mm -hmm. two years in, versus yeah. another six years in, and y'all have three great years and then three fucking horrible years, and it's to a point where you guys hate everything that you've done together, everything that you built together, mm -hmm. and now everything reminds you of that person. You ready to throw everything away. Yeah. So I, you know, again, you know, well, I, I got there happened, in two years. Look, man, that, that, I got there quickly. Look, look, you saw, you saw, look. <laughs> Look at the calendar. I can't do yeah. it. I can't do this. No, 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 no man. more. Let me get about I got yeah. Because <laughs> man, dude, like you, I, I, you see the videos, the jokes about the guys just sitting in their car in the driveway, yeah. and like that. Like I've done that a couple times, but I ain't never been like that ever, like consistently in my my marriage. Yeah, and I don't never want to be like I've gotten to it. My wife I'm like, oh, we go home. Works. I'd be like, she don't want to talk. That's a great fucking thing. She gonna want to talk about this so we can fix this so it's not awkward and tension is thick as hell in this house. That's a beautiful thing, and mm -hmm. I know that now. But if you got to do all that preparation to deal with somebody that doesn't appreciate what you bring to the table, the love that you're giving, man, hey, man, you might have got clipped, but you dodged a big bullet. <laughs> yeah. You was yeah. there when he's like, Trinity, help! And he yeah, dodged yeah, like yeah. three of them. At last, like, pow, ah, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You sneaky man. <laughs> so yeah. overall, man, I'm happy that you are in a place where you can rebuild yourself, heal from that, and find somebody that's more deserving of the love that you have to give. Because that's that's imperative, man. She wasn't gonna appreciate what you had for, her and you know, save yourself from that, bro. Yeah. No, absolutely. That I mean, I really not to just gloss over that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely, that means man. A lot to me, and I agree with you. And I do look at it that way. I was just being like, oh, I could, because I talked to so many. I think one of the things about when you end up in um, a relationship like that, where you feel either betrayed or that you didn't really actually know that person, is that. Um, you think you're alone in that. You mm -hmm. think you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. You got tricked. You're the only person that ever got tricked. And the more that I talk about it, the more I'm like, oh, wow, so many other people have same story, similar story, stories like you talked about where you thought it was your kid and then it's mm -hmm. not. Um, I talked to a dude in San Francisco where he had pretty much the exact same thing as me. Except for he, they had a baby and he was like, I got to stay here and support this kid for 18 years yeah. and then just stayed in a bad relationship for 18 years. Yeah. And I looked at my son and I was like, would I tell him to stay in this? Yeah. And I was like, no, I tell him to do what's best for him because I love him. Yeah. And so I got to do that for me. Yeah. You ain't no good to nobody else. If you, if, if you yourself was of her, or hurting mentally and emotionally and you starving yourself of happiness by trying to stay in a loveless marriage that you know is, is never going to bear any fruit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you, you wouldn't be any good to them. Eventually they would start to say, and kids are very intuitive. Yeah. We, we talk like, you know, you start spelling shit around the kid, like, make sure it's NAP time. Kids like, no, fuck it. every time you say these three letters, I got to lay the fuck down. Mm -hmm. Like kids pick up on stuff. So they undoubtedly would see the facade that you guys are trying to create for their well-being. And they're like, why are you doing this? Mm. You know, that's when they pick the favorite parent and all that type of shit. Now it's weird with the kid, too. So mm -hmm. I think it's best, man. Like, you, you only get one of these things in life. There ain't no resets. There no continues. There no do-overs. So I say live that shit unapologetically. Not like it's your last day, but, like, make sure you get everything in, man. And if happiness is very important to you, cut out the shit that ain't making you happy. Yeah. You know, because you can still be a great co-parent and great father from a co-parent situation, but you ain't no good to nobody. If you if your shit is so fucked up, you can't go out on the stage and make people laugh, what you love to do, mm -hmm. and that slows down the income, and that changes the quality of living. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, it's a domino effect. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that was it, and that's, I think, what, and the thing that she, she never counted on, she was like, I could just be like this, and he won't, and I'm like... If it affects my mental, I have to be happy to tell jokes. Yeah. If I don't tell jokes, we don't make money. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not going back there. Yeah, yeah. If you're not moving back to Studio City and that 
well, you in the 3C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what we're not going to do. So no, uh, if you are the dead weight, dr oh, no. drop the anchor. I go back to mentally Salem, Oregon, Roy Vaughn Apartments, Carriage House Apartments, <sighs> where a grown man would fucking drive down to get liquor in a Power Wheels car uh, because he didn't have a license. So he would take a kid's Power Wheel, drive it down to go against 40s, and drive it back up with 40 in one hand Power Wheel, <laughs> just steering in the other. This is where you from? This is where I'm from. Go back there, see if he's still around, get him on this fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fucking footage. You go there with a camera seat, like Dateline, and get that footage and have him. Tell me what you were thinking when you were riding down that hill. <laughs> I needed a fucking 40. Yeah. You know? Tell me how you got back up the hill. I had to get up. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is wild. It also shows the power of alcohol, man. That that shows the power of alcohol. I don't ever want to be that that down. So bad. you have a business manager now? I do. I have a well, I have a manager uh, for bookings. I have an agent and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And now I have a financial team. Okay. Yeah. So Good. you know, like if I ever win the lottery, I know exactly what the fuck I'm yeah. doing. Yeah. Because I can say that was. A, I mean, that was probably this of the. Truly, the smartest move I ever made because it set me up even for now going through this divorce mm -hmm. was that when I turned 38, it was on Undateable, um, was making money, and then my uh, lights in my apartment went out because I just was so busy going around doing shows and doing stuff that I forgot to pay my light bill. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, oh, I need this help. Is, yeah, this ain't a money thing. Mm -hmm. This is an organization yes. structure thing. Yes. And so I got an assistant and I got a business manager. Mm -hmm. and those were the first two things that I spent money on. I didn't get you know a car. I didn't get a fucking nice car until fucking three years when I found out Teddy was coming. Really? Yeah. I, until then, I was driving a 2014 Volkswagen Jetta. You're good with money. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking good with money. I got a tax rebate back, and I was like Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> And I have a unit number. That's why you know I'm fucked up. <laughs> shouldn't be having no fucking Bentley. If, I'm sorry for cussing, but you shouldn't have a Bentley in, a, in an apartment where you have a unit number. Okay? Yeah, you didn't listen to E40. I did. I did. I leased it. Okay. Yeah, I ain't going to spend a whole lot of money on it. He, uh, I think, again, I just, I always take lessons from rap, from wrestling. And this is E40. I don't remember what song, but it's an E40 song. He was like, How, nobody want to chill no more. I know it's cool to floss, but don't buy no $100,000 car before, before you, you got, got a house. house. Yes. Yeah, and I took that as... Oh, yeah, that was that ghetto was, gospel. Yeah. That was ghetto And I was, I'm kidding about the Bentley, guys. I that's, that's not... Like, I don't even... New cars are cool. Me and my wife both drive electric, but my my passion is old schools. Mm -hmm. So if I... You know, you ever come to the crib and you see a lot of cars, 80% of them are going to be old schools. And I buy them for pennies on a dollar, and I, I fix those up, and I typically sell those. Uh, but that's that's my passion. My, my main thing right now is just I'm saving up for some land. And I don't know if it's going to be Texas, but a lot of my friends are like, nah, I don't go to the laws and all of that. But I just want some land, bro. I want something I can call my, my own, and I can Wow, well, not... also, second, um, <clears throat> just, just me from listen, watching in financial things recently, because I think a lot of people get – on the taxes because of the lack of the income income tax, mm. but they got a huge property tax. Yeah, 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 no doubt. Now, I'm just going for the land. Okay. So we're either going to be Texas, uh, Georgia, or potentially um, like Joshua Tree. Mm -hmm. Like, I love it out there. Joshua Tree is probably my favorite unwind destination stateside. My favorite destination probably would be New Orleans, you know, hands down. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that about you <clears> until I looked at your nose ring again. And I was like, yeah, you could. Now I could see you in Joshua Tree all day wearing crochet pants and just. Pants? <laughs> crochet skirt. Yeah. No. <laughs> crochet thong, if anything. You know what I mean? I love Joshua Tree, man. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's so secluded. <laughs> uh, so secluded, man. But it, it's it's not far from civilization. You can have like a whole lot, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying, and, and not have a, a a neighbor for like a half a mile. Mm -hmm. And so I could play my music. I'm, I'm a big music fan. I could play music 
through the house. Uh, one of the places I, I cause I, I do a lot of renting on uh, Airbnb. Like that's my little getaway thing. I might go this week because after this long week of party and I just need some detox time. But this one place it had um, ah, what is it Sonos through every. Sp- uh, mm-hmm. Room in the house. Yeah. So when I had music everywhere I can go, and then they had the little pickups. Yeah, that's so what we do. We do pool. that here. I yeah. love that, bro. Yeah. And it's it's just like it's creating a, a a zen environment for me. Like I can let the music do the talking for me, and I have a playlist that just runs for like I think like thirteen days now because I've I've just add the the type of music I need to be in a mindset to be creative, to be relaxed on this playlist. And I can just have that playing. And any time I get up, there's a song that's going to motivate me to like write something mm. or relax if that's what I need to do in that moment. So I, I want that land to be able to do that and play that music loud and not have to interact with somebody. You know, when we talk for a living and entertain people for mm-hmm. a living, we have to disconnect. Mm-hmm. It's not even a want. It's, it's such a necessity for you to be able to like just away from everybody you know, for two, three days and just come back, recharge so I can love you, so I can communicate, so I can mm-hmm. be present the way I need to and the way you need me to. Mm-hmm. But I can't do that if I'm always operating from a, a cup that's half full or quarter way full because I've been constantly on the go. And I did that for years. And I'm just now starting to get in vacation and disconnecting. And it's not something I'm willing to give up because no, it's so nec- it's no ses- so necessary for me. I like how in tune you are with yourself, especially Man. everything going on from, like you said, from the environment where you were in East St. Louis. And yeah. now you're sitting here talking about therapy and talking about making sure that you have a full cup before you go yeah. out. Um, were you always like this or was it just... just a- I was always in tune with what I thought I needed at the time, but you don't know what you know until you know it. Like, I didn't know about therapy. It, you know, we came up in black household and go to no therapist and tell nobody outside this house about this house business. That's, you know, what I was taught. I didn't learn about, like, traditional therapy or, or non-traditional therapy, like now with the, you know, the Zoom calls and the FaceTime and the texting. and, like, you have so many options now. Um, and I've run a couple podcasts, so obviously better help is... One of my sponsors, and that, that they've been a stable sponsor, and it's something I'm very passionate when I do those ads. It's like, bro, you don't have to wait till something's going wrong to start therapy. It's actually better if you start, in my opinion, when when nothing is going wrong, because now you got a baseline, mm-hmm. and your your therapist, if they're a great therapist or a good therapist or just even moderately good, they're going to take notes. And so when you are dipping below that line, they're like, well, what's changed in the last week? Oh, well, this is this. Yeah, I can tell because your mm-hmm. energy when you came online is different or whatever. So <clears throat> sometimes you, and as a therapist, for those that don't know, because a lot of people don't know, they can't tell you what to do legally at all. That's not what they're going to do. They're going to ask you a line of questioning that's going to make you reflect on your situations and help you arrive at why you might be feeling a certain way or, or help you arrive at a, uh, a certain course of action that you can help help yourself better the situation you might find yourself in. Um, but I didn't know that. A lot of times I feel like, all right, well, I thought about something, you know, in my mind, so I gave it time, you know. But I found out on my own, like, sometimes you have to say something aloud. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're just giving it life in your head, and that's why it's so big in your head. That's why it's mm-hmm. so en- encompassing in your head. But sometimes when you speak it out, you're like, oh, shit. Okay, so this is happening because of this, and I'm probably tripping off of that because I have this trauma that, oh, shit, so, all right, I need to do this, right? Mm-hmm. And then once you start getting that game plan, you realize that this, you know, this thing that looked like a fucking mountain because you took a step, a couple step backs is really just an anthill. Mm-hmm. But you don't know to do that unless you, you know, talk to a professional and they can kind of help guide you through that. Yeah, especially when you're younger, if you're in your 20s and your 30s. As for me, I always speak for me, Everything felt so dire and so oh, yeah. important, and that the shows or opportunities were life or death. Mm-hmm. And to get older and realize just how much doesn't matter. I mean, you ain't beautiful. <laughs> ain't you fucking beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. The no, because I know I'm a people pleaser, bro. In the sense of I just want to make people happy, and sometimes it would be to my own detriment. And now at 40, I'm like, if I don't want to do that shit, I'm just not doing that shit. Yeah. That's no, fun. yeah. Tell them ladies no. So fun. <laughs> Great time. You I, the catch, Ron. Yes, I am. These bitches. And they need to know. Bro, it's a thousand them. It's only yeah, one of you. Yeah, that's true. Name another person with Ron Funches left. I'll wait. I'll wait. That's a good point. 
Yeah, and I was going to San Francisco to visit this lady. She was really nice, enjoyed her, mm. and then just feeling her kind of like, um, mostly what I called called her out on it. I was like, it seems like you're doing pretty much fuckboy behavior. I'm texting you, you know, just being like, and then not too much, like once every four days mm -hmm. texting her. Because I'm like, I ain't trying to be monogamous with you, but yeah. I am. No matter what I am, I'm kind and I'm a gentleman. Yes, absolutely. And so I'm going to text you. I'm going to go, how was your day? Da, da, da. She don't text back for like eight hours, and then when she texts back, bro, my day was long and I was like right away I was like I'm not bro I don't know who bro is but it ain't me don't nobody call me bro and this <laughs> <laughs> hey Ryan go to this man <laughs> hey I want to be the translator bitch who you talking to <laughs> did you forget who just like looking back at your phone maybe put my name under somebody else's contact I don't, I don't know yeah Hold but check, that ain't check the me number. and I just hit it back right away I go look uh, I just love a voice memo I was like I want you to hear my voice I'm not mad yeah. I'm not nothing but um Clearly, I'm putting in more effort than what you want to do. Yeah. Um, you can call me bro. You going I send you a message. You just hit me with a little thumbs up. <sighs> like I go, I get, I go as a former fuckboy myself. I know fuckboy behavior. I, you can't run game on the track, coach, baby. So I'm going to just go ahead and pull myself from the running. Mm -hmm. and you go and have yourself a lovely time. Uh, you're still beautiful. Mm -hmm. You're still you're lovely. Still beautiful. If I'm in town, <laughs> if I'm in town, naturally, I will hit you up. Yeah. But I'm certainly not going to pursue. Yeah. And then the watch for should flip out on that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Listen, my wife, uh, my wife, is a fuck boy. <laughs> when she was out dating, she she you know, and before we you know got together, she would t she would tell me some of the stories, and I told her some of mine, and I would, like I told her a story like that. She was like, "Well, why are you hitting the bitch up?" I was like, "Cause you know it's the right thing to do, you know, keep the relationship good. So if I'm there, you know, we can you know, it doesn't feel like at long glass, and we haven't smoked." She was like. If that happens to be the case, so what? That fight happens to be the case. Mm. You still you. She remember how you treated her when she was with you. You treated her respect like a gentleman. So she gon' if she still fuck with you, she gonna do it, regardless if she busy or not, regardless if she tied up or not, or she was why. And I was like, damn, I've been putting in way too much effort. Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know that. When I was taking oh first dates to nice rest, nice restaurants. Oh. I was like, oh no, you go mini golfing now. Oh yeah, oh, that, 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 here's the thing: I, mini golf would be after the coffee date because I got to make sure I can control you. I can, I can, I can, not control you. I can um, I'm glad handle you, adjust, you. I'm glad yeah. you adjusted that quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I meant I can handle you in 30 minutes or more doses. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Mini golf would be 45 to an hour. I want to see what this conversation is going to be about. Mm -hmm. Or unless it's just like on a physical tip. If it's just on a physical tip, hey, man, <laughs> it's room number such and such, such and such. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, let's have a couple of drinks in there. Boom, boom, boom. And then yeah. like, you can enjoy the room for the rest of your night. I got to get back to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that about being 40. Yeah, yeah Now it's, it's very like, uh, do you you got a kid? I got a kid. Uh, you got any diseases? No, I don't have any diseases. All right, it seems like we're fucking this. <laughs> 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 that's not that's not me. That don't beat around the bush, baby. I'm, I'm too I'm too old to be chasing. I got work to yeah, do. Yeah, <laughs> you know this pot roast ain't gonna cook itself. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, I, I dated this chick one time, and she had an old soul. I remember, and uh, I was probably like 27, so she had to be like 24. Um, but she had. She had plastic on her one couch. Mm. And I thought that was weird. I was like, maybe she was raised by her grandmama mm -hmm. and she just thinks that's the way to do it. But it's like, you ain't got to do that. But it's like, it wasn't like the, the, but it was still there. So maybe she got the whole piece from her grandma. So I don't know. But we would hang out and she would cook like whole meals. Like on a Tuesday, like greens on a Tuesday, Mac Mac and cheese. And I'm like, I'm going to eat this shit, but this heavy for a fucking Tuesday. Yeah. And um, she sent me a little video one time, and she had the whispers playing in the background, mm. Olivia. Mm. And I was like, "How how old are you?" I I I'd never experienced anything like that, but I liked her. Mm -hmm. She she took care of me right, but she took she was she was ready for a settle down type oh, of situation yeah, for sure. So I ran into a lot of those before I got my wife. My wife is the only one that I ever wanted to do that with, mm. and I knew it. Like when after I met, I I knew I was this one when I could never marry. So uh, I learned to spot the signs early of the people that 
had that potential, like, oh, I want to do, uh, that's not what we done. Mm -hmm. it just, we play it. We having a good time. Mm -hmm. I'm Vegas. That's what you should look at me as, Vegas. Yeah. You, you fuck with me for a good time. You have some stories to tell your girls, but you don't want to live here. Mm -hmm. This this ain't what you want. I'm a spa resort. Mm, like, have you been? Ass nigga. This a yeah. bougie ass yeah. nigga oh, yeah. right there. I like yeah. it. Have you been run down? Is the <laughs> working too much? People out there treating you shitty. You feeling not sparkly? Come on over. <laughs> We'll have great vibes. I'll treat you nice. I'll treat you to a nice dinner. You're going to probably meet some fantastic mm -hmm. people. Yeah. My friends are wonderful. And great then company. you go back into the world. Yeah. Because you can't live at a spot. No. And it's not something that you do every week even. Mm -mm. You know, it's something where you need that little pick-me-up and maybe once a month or something mm -hmm. like that. Maybe bi-weekly. Yeah. You know, every two weeks you do what you do. You know what if your credit is good. If your credit is good. And, yeah. and if you qualify. Because sometimes... Like, <laughs> <laughs> the first time you need to get right to refuse at the yeah. front window. Like, yeah. man, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. Some people you just like, you gotta get a one time treatment. Yeah. And yeah. you gotta go. No laundering, bitch. Okay. First of all, your eyes got too big when you came into the spa. I, I need you to be, I need you to relax that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fake it till you make it, baby. And act yeah. like you've been somewhere before. Yeah. Like, oh my God. It took you back to the hash sale. Yeah. That's what it is. Oh, you got a K Q. Yeah. Oh, cable? Yeah, we rapping all of this shit. Yeah. I don't be too excited when you see me, bitch. No. I don't want to. I had this one chick, she would always answer on the first ring. And I don't know if she thought it was cute or something, but I was like, bitch, you are too available. <laughs> you're too available. You're not working hard enough. If you're able to answer me every time I call on the first ring, you're not working hard enough. <laughs> I don't even know if she had a voicemail. She might have had one of those. The person you're calling has not set up a voice, but I would never know because I never made it past the first fucking ring. Yeah, I need you to have. I need you to have some shit going on. I, agree. I can't be the most exciting thing that you have on, or the only thing rather. No, truly, I can be the most exciting, but I shouldn't be the only thing you got going on because that that's scary. I don't want to be anybody's world. Yeah, even my wife. That's what I was. Yeah, I, that's what I was with my last when I was the world. No, I can't I do was, that. Yeah, no, I found out that's yeah. too much pressure. It's very a lot of pressure. Yeah. What if I have a bad night? Yeah, no, 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 baby. Yeah, no, I can't do that. No, that shit is crazy. No, you gotta have a balance. You gotta have your things going on. Yes. And then, yeah, and it's the same thing. I'll date somebody, and they'll. Be, it's weird. The one they could just say one sentence. I could find them hot as hell and mm -hmm. enjoy them. And I had a lady I was hanging out with a couple of days ago, and she just was like, "Yeah, I normally wake up around noon," and I was like, "What?" <laughs> I'd be like, you work the last shift as a sheriff? You, you do the overnight shift? No. You just wake up around yeah, that time. She averages between 10 and 11 hours of sleep. Bitch, what do you do when you need that much sleep? I have no idea. And here's the thing. I, I, I am a proponent and supporter of good rest. Six to eight hours. Yes. If you sleep in 10 to 12 hours, even from a productive human being, not even like just being a professional, productive human being, you only have... 10 to 12 hours of the day to do your normal stuff. And that first and that second hour don't count. That no. first hour, you sitting on the toilet scrolling. Mm -hmm. Okay, you still waking eating, up. Yeah, not even eating breakfast. Yeah, yet. you're doing this. You're doing this yeah, shit in the chair. Four hours in before you probably have breakfast. Oh, my God. So you're no. down to eight hours. Mm -mm, that's and, a good-ass red flag. Yeah. That's a good-ass red flag. I, I, I don't even like talking to people when they do shorthand text. Mm. Because text is already... Uh, easy to misinterpret because you can't hear the tone in the text. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing shorthand text to me, and first of all, I need to be abreast on all the updated shorthand text. Um, I, I don't like that. Yeah. I, I don't like that. Use all your words. If you use the wrong to or there, I make a mental notes. Right? I, I mean, how many times that happened? The first time it happened, I'm going to put an exclamation point, the double exclamation point on our phone. I'm going to hit that message with that. <laughs> and that's 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 my squiggly line. That's my Google, right? And I, when you say what, I'm not going to say anything because I'm going to give you an opportunity to self-correct. Mm -hmm. After three times, we're not going to talk no more. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a double-edged sword on that because I write and vibe a lot. So I often... I will go the other way, that if someone corrects me on a spelling mistake, I'm going to go, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> you, you couldn't pick up on it contextually? No, I do get it. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> 
contextually. <laughs> Can't tell I'm listening to Kendrick right now, motherfucker. That's how he spell it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do get if it's a two or a then or then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. I get that. But if you're like, oh, do you mean you misspell? I'm like, yeah, okay. You spent more time correcting me than just vibing with this conversation. <laughs> That's fair. That's very fair. I give you that one right there. I give you that right there. Thank you. That's a good point. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good conversation, I had man. A great time. It was fucking fantastic. Please have me back anytime. Man. I think it's we great. have to. We didn't really. We didn't. We barely talked about your marriage. We barely yeah. talked about. Uh, I mean, you really it took me aside when it was like, oh, I got a kid shot, yeah. fire. We didn't mm-hmm. bring up the shot as much. The shot was a different thing. Shot was uh, wrong place, wrong time. I was going to see a girl. Uh, East St. Louis and hit this corner and I was pedaling up to her house and a car hit the corner and started hitting fire and I just got hit in the mm-hmm. back. That's just wrong place, wrong time. I was I was I was going to try to get to suck some titties though. You know? And on a little was, bike. On a little bike, a little huffy. Yeah. Yep. And this is after I had the kids, so it was like, I thought you said she was going, you know what? God was like, mm, that's just a warning again. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It could have been worse. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, but uh yeah, that was just wrong place, wrong time, man. Well, I'm glad you're still here. But you <laughs> <laughs> that didn't even you know like porn is available on your phone. Back then I was trying to pixelate and yeah. color and all of that or video. Look, oh, at, look yeah. where we are right now. Man. I agree. Electric cars. Getting better, and that's why I tell myself, like, I got to stay alive to see yeah. what, what Grand Theft Auto 6 is like. Ooh, that, that might year. come out in six years. No, next year. You, they, haven't they said it before and they yeah, push it back? I believe in them this time. Oh, look at you. You're so optimistic <laughs> and gullible. You're so yeah, naive. That's true. That's, yeah, well, he yeah. Loves love. That's what happens. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> now me and Grand Theft Auto going to be in court for a year and a half. I'm going to try to <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to start gaming back this year. I, I something I've been planning on doing, and my daughter's trying to push me to do it. But I just been, I'm. I, it's like DJing. I got all the equipment, but I'm afraid to do it because I'm afraid to be bad at it. Mm. Yeah, it's just fun, relaxing. Yeah, I know. Not a good I know. time. You're right. You're right. Well, yeah, now you got to have me back and I'll tell you the other stories about my wife and 11 years and all of that shit, man. Yeah, I'd love to. But tell people, uh, they, let's get you up these three. I'm sure I won't be able to affect the guarantees, but <laughs> let's tell <laughs> we just I've never to get gotten that small of a guarantee Bro. in my life. Yeah, man. Fifteen hundred, thousand, fifteen hundred. Yeah. yeah, I remember yeah. those, yeah. but not three hundred. Three hundred. I showed the contracts. I say it, and I was like, one day you're gonna regret this. Yeah. 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 Um, but at to hear more on everything, uh, Instagram, Twitter, um, uh, TikTok, everything, and on YouTube at to hear more. So I got the new season of Word in This Horror coming out with Ron Funch is on. That's gonna be out in April. Uh, depending on when this come out, might already be out. Uh, but yeah, look out for that, man. Very excited about that. And uh, Simon Says, I got a, I got a show where I do Simon Says with my friends. Okay. And uh, it's a lot of fun because I'm I'm really fucking crazy good at Simon Says. Okay. Yeah. It's on some wicked shit. <laughs> Unless, That's a weird flex, but yeah. it's, it's a flex nonetheless. No, I do. I miss Pac-Man. I'm pretty good at Miss Pac-Man. <laughs> and I will play it on dates. And it usually means they start their eyes start glossing over because I'm still going for like 30, 35 minutes. Um, but I also judge the date by how they play Miss Pac-Man. I will expound. I could tell. Um, is that... Most of the time, and I don't really want to be sexist, or, mm-hmm. but most of the time when I see a woman play Miss Pac-Man, they just go to clear the board. They don't do the risk and reward. Mm. They don't try to eat all the ghosts. Mm. And so I'm looking for a lady that knows how to eat the ghost. Hey, man, there's no reward without the risk, baby. <laughs> and the greater the risk, the greater the reward. Yeah. Y'all heard it with Ron Funches. You got to eat. You got to chase some ghosts down, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He basically said you got to put that ghost in your mouth. Yeah. You got to put icky, sticky, <laughs> pinky, and bluey all in your mouth. <laughs> if you ain't ready to take the tea down, then you can't <laughs> fuck with the kid. <laughs> <laughs> you take a shot at the king, you better not miss. <laughs> 
last thing I ask you is a little pearl, p- little piece of advice, pearl of wisdom, just mm-hmm. something, anything like uh, you maybe something you thought about since you turned forty or like, whatever, something to help our getting better community to get better. That's it. Aside uh, from therapy, because do that shit, it matters. I had posted maybe like two years ago. Um, I was like, yo, share the greatest piece of advice you ever got. Let's help each other out. And uh, this f- amazingly funny comedian from Chicago named Jess Neese posted, if you're going through something or you're dealing with something and you can't do anything about it, don't do anything about it. If you can do something about it, no, no, I'm sorry. If you're going through something and you can do something about it, don't worry about it. If you're going through something and you can't do anything about it, don't worry about it. Because what can you do? Mm-hmm. And I'm a person that obsessively stresses over things. And that little bit right there just helped me. It was like, man, if I could do something about it, all right, I'm going to take care of it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let this go until tomorrow. I'm going to pick it back up tomorrow and I'm going to handle it. If I can't do anything about it and the events just have to unfold the way they have to unfold, then that's just what's going to be. Mm-hmm. Me obsessing over it until that happens is not going to do anything but drive my blood pressure up. And I don't need that. So that's my little nugget right there. That's great advice. Um, as a tarot practitioner uh yeah 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 um yeah 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 there's a card called oppression that is a lot like that and it's usually a lot of people take oppression as a negative thing Mm -hmm. and usually it is but it's about being in a situation where you don't have control and where Mm -hmm. you're locked in place and sometimes the the like the worst thing you can do if you're in cuffs is thrash around Mm -hmm. you're gonna hurt yourself you're gonna fucking break your shoulder and so a lot of the things in that card tells you shows you to like calm down focus and just go through and don't you will do more harm to yourself by fighting things that are out of your control than by just like you say relaxing and going through it and one of my biggest mantras to myself and i tell myself this as i go through this divorce and stuff is that well i get worried about maintaining my home and my money and all my stuff it's just that uh, i always say to myself nothing has ever turned out to be as big of a deal as you make it out to be in your head ever in my life that's true that's very true damn that's very good <clears throat> and all the shit that you thought was the hardest shit in the world you've already faced mm-hmm. and you you've overcome it i'm sure it was something 10 years ago like what the fuck how the fuck i'm gonna get out of this well, yeah and you did it you did it, and you're here now facing something else, and you're like, all right, fucking well, this is this is gonna be chapter six of the book. Yeah, now I would love some chapters that are just chill and <laughs> hanging out and just relaxing. What are we all? Yeah, chapter three. Ah, I found my piece. <laughs> It'd be oh, one page, and then chapter four, this bitch destroyed. <laughs> Forty-six pages in this chapter alone. <laughs> 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 oh, but uh, I mean, I just really I like what you do with the word in its heart. I like your style. I like that you um, bring an intelligence, bring a and like even like a textbook style intelligence to your comedy to that is like not stereotypical in any mm-hmm. manner, but still uniformly and uniquely black in mm-hmm. what you do um but in a manner that is what i call true and authentic that there's so many black people like when i went to saw bob james like that's the type of black people who i try to write for mm-hmm. and i see you do that i don't i like we are intelligent we are yeah. affluent we are doing well like most of my biggest heroes in comedy of black comedy are people like flip wilson yeah um who like showcased black excellence and black wealth yeah and i think sometimes that's frowned upon or not shown as what you do and i love it when people just go fuck it this is me this is what i do i love your mm-hmm. camaraderie and the the brotherhood that you have with kev and, and tony and also and i always um i just I'm, you, you know i'm a big supporter of you guys thank you, you man you know it or not i, I, I watch all the shit you guys do well, i appreciate I that it. man so, you have a bidet yeah I was going. I wanted to buy you a bidet. <laughs> That's a weird gift, but like it changes the way you use the bathroom for the rest of your life. Yeah, no, I got a full Toto washlet. It like <sighs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I, for, I forgot who I was talking to. <laughs> That's, That's my bad, Rod. Yeah. I ain't mean to insult you like that. My yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, but I, yeah, I get friends bidets for their birthdays, like mm-hmm. as a gift because I. 
I, the quality of life is better. No, man. I agree like, that. Just, oh, you know, the boy, my oldest, he's the one who brought bidets. He wanted oh. a little um, the tushy. Yeah. And so we got that. And then I went to Japan and oh, started Japan, changing. That's yeah, where I got uh, hooked at Japan. Yeah, yeah. And they, I was like, I different. want this toilet. Hey. And then we got that toilet. That toilet changed the way me and my wife interacted in the bed. No, I get that. That little trickle came out. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My eyebrows had never like tingled. I was like, <laughs> You been letting me do you the whole time and they told me once to try Oh, you selfish. <laughs> you selfish. Okay, that, that, yeah, that's fucked up. If you were already doing it, it's one thing if you weren't doing yeah, it. I was already you ain't never tell me you you might try like this. You do it with food, but when it comes to you eating, bitch, that's even good. <laughs> No, that's, I say that all the time. I've said that multiple times on the podcast. One of the, like, I, the, the divorce sucks, and I won't do it, but the best thing is now I've gotten my ass eaten so many times <laughs> when I thought I'd like it and didn't never got it, and now I'm like, would I have paid this much money to find out that I like him? Yes. <laughs> Hey, prices, baby. You know what I mean? It's a small price to pay, baby. Listen, I didn't even know my legs could do the little chicken yeah. wings thing right oh, there. Yeah. Hey, man, look at no. that. Look at it. Come on, man. Come on, man. No, I'm finished. I sit in the bed like a mermaid. I put on some daylight. <laughs> I look back at her. You see this one already? This is good. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It that's, changes that's, things, that's, man. Yeah, stay that. Keep you together. That's ah. what you. Ah, well, good thank time. you, thank, thank you for you. coming. Hey, right, man. Thank you guys for listening. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out our last episode right over here. Bam! Or perhaps a video picked by our overlords at YouTube. Boop. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit it up. Hit it up. Press the button. Press it.